this is my Torah on Luria and the Sefirot. So, what are they? Uh, this is actually a pretty big topic, if done properly, because there are two bits to it. The Sefirot come from the book called the Zohar, which was written in Spain in the 13th century, although it makes itself out to be uh, from Talmudic times. And Yitzhak Luria lived some 300 years later, and he took the basic concepts of the Sefirot from the Zohar, but he developed a new way of talking about them. I'm not going to talk about the Kabbalah of the Zohar and the differences between that and between that and Luria's version, because the rest of it is about Luria's version of the Sefirot. So, what are the Sefirot? Very, very briefly, they are sort of aspects of God or manifestations of the divine. They have names like Chesed, Hod, Yesod, and there are ten of them. And Luria makes them actors in a great cosmic drama. In this drama, creation happened when the Ensof, literally infinite, God, withdrew uh, to make space for things other than this Ensof, and the ten Sfirot emanated from that Ensof. But the divine light that was powering them was too strong, and the vessels uh, in which they were held shattered, and the divine light was scattered across existence, and evil and imperfection was brought into the world. And the task of the mystic is to go and redeem these sparks of the Sfirot and heal the world. And that originally is where Tikkun Olam came from. But to be clear, it was a Kabbalistic concept that really didn't have much to do with volunteering in soup kitchens. It was much more about carrying out mystical rituals and meditation and stuff. Now, there is a great deal more to Luria's Kabbalah than that. It was a very complicated framework involving four worlds and different parts of him, which are faces of God, etc., etc. And to be honest with you, I kind of can't follow it myself properly. So, my take on this comes in two different ways. If I take Luria at face value, then, look, with all due respect to friends and teachers who think that these Sfirot are great truths with deep things to say about the world, I personally can't take it that seriously. I look at it and I see that it's at best a form of Jewish mythology. Now, I like mythology, but I don't need it in my religion. And to be honest, at worst, if taken at face value, it just reminds me of fantasy literature. The Ten Sfirot, Hod, Netzach, Chesed. I just think of things like you know, the Lord of the Rings, Nenya, Vilya, Narya, the three rings of power of the elf lords. But here's the thing. I love fantasy novels, actually, and not just because they're escapist fun. The good ones tap into deep, powerful human archetypes and struggles, the hero's quest and all that kind of stuff. And Luria's Kabbalah, I think, is doing the same thing, but on a more serious and existential level. The idea of the Sfirot is another version of the solution that religions have come up with in other forms to an old problem. The problem is that it's an understatement to say that God is not very approachable. Infinite, eternal beings that aren't really even beings as we are, are a bit tricky to relate to. So lots of religions come up with intermediaries of some sort. Christianity has Jesus, Shia Islam has the Imam, and so on and so on. And the Sfirot are partly about that. They're things that we can sort of get our heads around. We can't relate to the infinite God, but maybe we can relate to ideas of mercy, justice, and so on. But the Sfirot are more than that. Uh, There's a story there. And now, of course, we're in familiar territory. We know that stories are a fundamental religious experience. There's the foundational story of leaving Egypt. There's the story of Hanukkah. There's the story of Purim. There's even a story to Shavuot and Sukkot. The Kabbalah of Luria is giving us another story of how evil came into the world, of why the world is imperfect, about what we have to do in it. And in that sense, it's absolutely in the Jewish mainstream. I personally don't particularly relate to this particular story, but hey, you know, some people don't like Purim. I recognise what it's trying to do, and that's enough for me to be more sympathetic to it. Thank you.